Well, here I am on the mountain. About the hottest time of day. As you can see, Leviathan spreads out there. Los Angeles is a little bit to our right. Uh, you can see it a little bit through the gray smog, um, but it's blocked by the trees at the moment. But I was just up here and I was, as I was um, enjoying the peace and quiet and listening to the birds and just kind of letting myself get lost in thought and not really concerning myself with time or anything, you know, where everything just kind of melts away. And, um, you know, as I was coming down here, I was looking, you know, the power poles start to appear and the other things start to appear. All the hard lines that, uh, the hard lines and perfect circles that um, just are incongruent, uh, incongruent with all these slopes and angles and strange lines and spirals and patterns, but none of which is a straight line or a perfect circle, right? Reality is not statistical. Reality is not a straight edge. And if you believe that, well, death will remind you when it comes for you that every day, all of us are on the edge of falling off of said edge, right? And it's only by repression generally, being busy, being purposeful, being uh, effective, efficient, moral, good, all the things that we lump together in a hidden value system that lies underneath all that is human, you know, that's been built up over, you know, millions of years. And the fact that here we are, I've been talking about Big Brother and why irony is tyranny. And part of that is because, well, you know, the you know, the, it's been millions of years in the making, and yet it's only within the last few years of human existence, right? If, uh, if all of a uh, human existence, not even the universe was a calendar, if all of human was existence, uh, if all of human existence was just a single calendar, you know, it's only like the last five minutes that the last man came into being, and he says he invented happiness, and he says he has it all figured out, and he says out of all times and places, this is the only time and place, and that he is the future and he's the model for the future and there's never been anything before him and never been anything after him you know and this is by design this is big brother's design this uh the tyranny of it is that um everyone you know they lie to each other's faces and really what they're saying is well we can't say what we mean because we're prisoners we're not allowed to. So you look each other in the face. Maybe you give each other a middle finger. Maybe it's just a wink. Maybe it's funny. Maybe, um, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, what it really is, is it's a prisoner. It's admitting you're helpless. And then it's admitting there's nothing anyone can do about it. That's why irony is tyranny. That's why Big Brother is the worst because one, it's not even real, right? Like, like all... Um, like everything, it's human all too human. Uh, God didn't come back to save the Christian world. So the Western world in that story, Oceana, made a fake God. So he's not real. But due to the consequences of millions of years of human evolution culminating in a corporation state, for all intents and purposes, the, it is real because the consequences are real. And the story is real and it's backed by consequence. So that's all that matters, right? And the irony of it is that every bit of it is a lie. The lie of it is that it's perfect and figured out and that's all there is to it. And there's nothing more to know and nothing more to do. And that's also part of the lie is that any of that is true. In fact, everything is up for debate. Everything is in need of valuation and reevaluation time and time again. Imagine if at any point in history in the past, there were people who actually said, you know what, that's it, pack it in. Um, we have our world. We don't need anything else. We're not, you know, and what happened to all those people? What happened to those people who thought they had it figured out, right? They died. They were killed. They killed themselves. You know, I don't, whether we attach moral attachment, right? That's where we're at. That's where we've long been at. Those moral circumstances and realities haven't changed. Uh, if illusion is necessary, that's like saying morality is necessary. And Big Brother is a what if experiment of what if you, what if you have the bones of mankind, like a dead body, but no living heart, no brain, nothing can change, nothing can live, nothing can move, nothing can breathe, nothing can be, 
uh, nothing can even have, right? You know, you would say, I guess if we're on the interim step, people are still believing in the notion of having, but that's only because everyone hasn't been properly uh, robbed and devalued enough to get to that point. You know, there's too many little oligarchs is what you could say. But as you can see throughout history is that like that, the larger house never wins. They all fall prey to the bigger fish. So it doesn't matter how much they have, uh, even if they can kind of escape and live between the lines, that's usually what wealth has meant in history. Why everyone wants it is protection, security, because they're otherwise, you know, they understand the reality of the rest of the animals and that, that um, you know, uh, security, power, all these things are important. So the irony of Big Brother and that world is that they think they figured it out. Um, everything's a lie. There's nothing anyone can do. And uh, there's no one, and even if there was something to do, there's no one actually there to do it. I, I mentioned that Orwell, aka Eric Blair, had thought about titling the book The Last Man and uh, as a tragedy. And I guess you could say Nietzsche's Last Man is also a tragedy, but he relates it to the audience at the time because, you know, Zarathustra comes down from the mountain and no one can understand his highest teaching because, you know, he just comes out the gate with the highest. He doesn't waste his time. He doesn't sit there and hemming and hawing. He's not ironic. He's dead sincere. And not a single person can understand him, right? The Winstonian 1984 dilemma. Because Winston literally realizes the horror of his dilemma, right? The problem, uh, the loneliness and isolation of his dilemma that if the future is like the past, like if, if the future is like it is where he is now, he knows that no one will listen. No one can here right because that's how their ears have been created and then he goes um from there you know that even if the future is different then what he's saying wouldn't matter that they don't matter right so he's basically stuck at the nihilist precipice right he and by figuring out himself he is valuating and revaluating all values because everything was laid out for him by the party right he was born into that world he didn't have a choice in it and neither did anyone else and it's always been this way and by having a scapegoat right you know basically big brother is following christianity through to its logical conclusion by always having a scapegoat and you know the kind of general cultural instantiation but it's basically meets eric Fromm's notion of western psychology how it had been um kind of mass manufactured to fit into this model that um worships death worships objects worships turning living things into objects uh you know that really back to that idea of if big brother is a fake god but he's no heart or mind he's just the bones you know man it's man eternally in a sepulcher it's man eternally in a tomb a casket it's the species this is more, and this is the horror of it right the irony of it it's mankind going extinct without it going extinct and this is also why nietzsche calls the last man contemptuous and it's why he uses that as a bridge why because if he's talking about a future evolution of a higher and better humanity that the current man will not understand then what he's saying is that you won't actually yeah you can't understand that and you'll never understand that but what you can actually understand is what is beneath you because you're actually beneath what comes next just like those previous people were but you know like the previous hominids the other ones who went extinct for one reason or another you know they just you know couldn't fit in or they were too stupid or they're too much of a laughing stock you can kind of probably imagine that that to homo sapien who was very socially sophisticated neanderthal had to look pretty funny in what he did or didn't understand right so anyway, the irony and the horror of the story is just that, that it's lying to each other's face, it's admitting you're powerless, it's admit it's the song of a prisoner, and then it's saying there's nothing anyone can do about it. It's um, basically if Big Brother got there, got here, it's because um, everyone gave up. It's because they lost their will to live, right? Those, those earths, that earth had become barren. His bow had no longer learned how to whiz. You know, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on, and I will. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's about the heat of the day, which means it's nice because there's almost nobody out. Um, I've been keeping an eye out, see if we see something interesting like a rattlesnake for you. Uh, so far, it's a bunch of lizards and squirrels and a few nice people who I talk to and they're having a nice day it looked like. So, you know, that's the whole thing is you can completely forget within the luxury of our civilization because it's just how it is, guys. Uh, 
right? This is why everyone always, you know, the, the guilt and the pity of, oh, someone has a worse and blah, blah. It's like, yeah, here we're very luxurious. We get to completely forget there's a war ever happening, right? And you can tune in, you can tune out, you can take part. But either way, it all serves one end. Uh, and he's a skeleton and he's a vengeful and a hateful and an insecure and an imaginary God. Anyway, I uh, hope your day's good and I'll catch you later. Thanks for checking it out. Bye.